Good morning students. Today we will be learning about the organization of male urethra. First of all, I have to give you the orientation of this model which is there for our understanding today. So first of all, the most posterior structure as we can see here is the sacrum. In front of it, we can see the rectum and partially you can see it is covered by the peritoneum and partially it's not. And then you can see in front of that, there we can see the urinary bladder. You can see its lower surface is not, is, is rough, but its upper surface is shiny because superiorly it is covered by the peritoneum, but on the inferior lateral surface and on the base, there is no peritoneum. So this is, this structure is nothing but the seminal vesicle and this is the prostate gland. We have to look at, this is the testes and then we can see the epididymis and then we can see the vas deferens along with other structures who are entering or leaving these testes and most visible this purplish blue structure which is visible to you that is the pimpaniform plexus of veins and then you can see it's all the way coming up and there is the penis as we have to learn today regarding the urethra and on this model I'll be explaining you about the male urethra so we have to go inside so to go inside we should be after removing this part of the urinary bladder and the prostate then we will be able to see inside the detail of the urethra. We have removed the upper part of the urinary bladder from this model and now we can see inside. This is the cavity of the urinary bladder, you can see the lining mucosa, you can see the retrusor muscle, you can see the ureteric orifices. Now let's talk about the urethra. We all know the urethra has various parts. In a broad term, we categorize it as a part where it begins, that is the pre-prostatic urethra and that is close to the bladder neck, pre-prostatic urethra. The moment it reaches to this prostate gland, when it passes through this prostate gland, we call it prostatic urethra. Then it passes through a muscle, a muscle layer here and the part which is traversing through that muscle layer, I can sh cannot show you on this model, that is the membranous urethra. And then further, it has been called as the spongy urethra. Spongy urethra has two parts. One part which lies horizontally, that part is called bulbar urethra. And then we can see here, within the length of the penis, we have the penile urethra. Now I'm using another model to make things more clearer. And this is from another view. So overall, we know that this is the urinary bladder. You can see the lower part of it. And then we, we are looking at more clearly the urethra. And we said that at the bladder neck, this is the pre-prostatic urethra. Within the prostate gland is the prostatic urethra. And then as I told you, when it passes through this muscle, this part, this much part of the urethra, we call it membranous urethra. And now beyond that, this whole length, which goes horizontally, and then it bends downwards, we call it spongy urethra. Spongy urethra has been divided into two parts. The part which you can see here at the moment, that is the bulbar part of the spongy urethra. The penile part, I'll be showing you in the later part of our learning today. Now, let's discuss the each part individually. The part, the pre-prostatic urethra, which is at the bladder neck, that is surrounded by internal urethral sphincters. These internal urethral sphincters, they are made up of smooth muscle and they are controlled by autonomic nervous system. Then we have this prostatic urethra. Prostatic urethra is the widest part of the male urethra and you can see posteriorly, ejaculatory duct is joining this prostatic urethra. And this ejaculatory duct is the, is the source which is bringing semen and that has been poured into the urethra and at the time of ejaculation, this semen has been pushed, has been ejaculated through the remaining length of the urethra. After this prostatic urethra, you can see that the part which is enclosed in this muscle, that is the membranous urethra. The part of the urethra which is been labeled as the membranous urethra is the most delicate and the shortest part of the male urethra. Then comes the spongy urethra and right now you are looking at the bulbar part of the 
spongy urethra. This part is very much susceptible to be injured, especially in straddle type of injuries. I'm sure you will understand what are those straddle injuries. Let's say you're, you're riding a bike and you fall on the bar or you're doing some acrobat, some gymnastic activity and you fall on a bar. So there is a direct damage to this part of the urethra. So this is most susceptible to be injured in straddle type of injury. Membranous urethra is usually connected to the injuries which are related to instrumentation. Instrumentation of what? Instrumentation of the urethra or urethral catheterization. So these are the susceptibilities. Now I'm showing you the penile urethra. As we learned earlier that the spongy urethra was divided into a horizontal part that was called the bulbar urethra and it is not been shown in this model but we have discussed in the previous model. So now we'll be coming to the penile urethra. So for that penile urethra let's go in and we can see that. So now this penile urethra is the longest part of the male urethra and when it terminates you can see that there it is being dilated. So this dilated part is called navicular fossa and then it terminates its final destination is at the external urethral meatus. I hope we have covered the whole male urethra and what we have said from the beginning the male urethra is having different parts we have pre-prostatic part we have a prostatic part we have a membranous part then we have a bulbar part and then we have a penile part which leads to the navicular fossa and it terminates as external urethral meatus so the journey begins from the internal urethral meatus to the external urethral meatus thank you very much okay so let's talk about the organization of the urethral sphincters in male so there we can see that this is the location as we have discussed earlier, earlier, this is the location where we have internal urethral sphincter and somewhere here we have the location of the external urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is involuntary and it is controlled by the autonomic nerves and the external urethral sphincter that is voluntary and this is controlled by somatic nerves. And which somatic nerve is here? That is the pudendal nerve. So, this is the location of the external sphincter and this is the location of the internal sphincter. Now, in males, the internal sphincter is well established because the reason is the male urethra is used for the passage of urine as well as the semen. So, there is one common passage and that is different from females. They have two separate openings for the passage of genital material and for the passage of urine. But in male as we have two, one is doing the job for two. So for that reason we need two sphincters primarily. As we can see here there is the opening of the ejaculatory duct. Which part of the urethra? Prostatic urethra. Now at the time of intercourse internal sphincter has to be tightened up and it should be closed and at the time of ejaculation external sphincter is open and the semen is being propelled forward to go to its destination. Now if internal sphincter becomes weak or non-functional or if it's not there then what happens at the time of ejaculation too much semen can be going backwards ascend upwards into the lumen of the urinary bladder and this process is called retrograde ejaculation and this has been seen in those people who have problem who have incompetency of internal urethral sphincter. So that's why males needs to have an internal sphincter and an external sphincter both. An internal sphincter is involuntary and external sphincter is a voluntary sphincter in our body.